So if you watched my last video, you guys know that I was sick for a while. I did get over the sickness, and I filmed a pretty cool writing video this weekend, but due to some complications, I wasn't able to get the video out. I'm normally pretty busy during the week, and I didn't want to just go like two weeks without uploading, so I took to Twitter and asked you guys for some ideas of a video that I could make an upload. As basic of a suggestion as it was, making a Q&A video seemed like a smart thing to do. So I'm going to take this opportunity to answer a lot of the questions that you guys have for me. Some I may have answered in the past, but I know that there's a ton of new subscribers out there, and I really want to make sure you guys are in the loop with everything that's going on, and just a lot of basic stuff about the meaning of life, how to cook a burger. I'm just gonna walk around in my house while I do this. I hope it's not annoying. <laughs> now I know I've been going pretty hard in the car content lately, so I feel that this first question is particularly applicable. K City asked why I started getting into the car scene. Now this to me is a pretty interesting question because I don't feel like I've actually gotten to the car scene any more than I have been in the past. Doing car stuff's always been a part of my life, but it's been kind of like that part of my life that I didn't really put on YouTube or anything, because before it was primarily a BMX channel. And I would feel weird if I uploaded like a solely car content video, but now I really like where my channel has been and that I can upload really anything that I do and you guys enjoy it. So it's not that I've been getting any more into cars, it's just that I've been sharing that part of my life with you. Which is awesome for me because before I used to go like a week or two sometimes without uploading a video because you know, we might have a bunch of rain or I might just not ride because of school, car stuff, whatever. So now since I can film and upload videos revolving cars, it opens up a whole entire new window of using my time more efficiently, if you know what I mean. It's awesome, I mean, I can do the stuff that I love and I can make videos out of it now instead of just making BMX videos. So although some of you have the impression that I'm like doing less BMX videos in exchange for car videos, in my head it's more just that I'm filling the time between BMX videos with car stuff. Ultimately, one of the main reasons why I love YouTube is that I can basically do whatever I enjoy and feel like I can put together an entertaining video about and you guys typically dig it, so I don't ever want to get to the point where I feel like I'm making videos just because it's what people want to see. I want to do what I want to do, and if you guys enjoy it, that's awesome. If not, I'm sorry. I don't want to change my life for you guys, even though you are super important to me. I hope that makes sense. Next up, we have Jacob Ortega asking if growing up, if I was ever scared or worried about my future. So this is another really good question. Seeing as a lot of you guys just recently subscribed, I kind of want to go back in time and just give you my general career path through school, if you will. A point in life where I was scared of my future would probably be like late high school. A lot of you guys might be there now where you have to like pick your college, you have to figure out what you want to do as a living, and you're like still in college and you barely even know what you want to do the next week, let alone for the rest of your life. I've always been really good in math and like physics and chemistry and everything, so pretty much all my teachers pushed me towards mechanical engineering. and. It sounded pretty cool, mainly to me. I was like, well, I'll be making a lot of money, so that'll be sick. But I've always had this urge to like own a business, whether it be a bike shop or a skate park or something in me. So in my head, I was just going to school to become a mechanical engineer so I can make a lot of money and then start a business. So I mean, yeah, I guess I was a little scared of my future then and even scared of my future once I started becoming an engineer. But to give you an idea of how that's changed, first year I was a mechanical engineering student I liked it, it was fun. It wasn't like as hard as people made it out to be for me, but it wasn't like I thought. I kind of had it in my head that I'd be doing a lot of hands-on stuff. I wanted to design cars. I thought that would be really cool. And then I realized a lot of it's paperwork, a lot of it's working for other people, and a lot of it's not doing what you want to do. So I was kind of like in this weird little rut, if you will, where I just wasn't too stoked on the idea of becoming a mechanical engineer. And I really started to reevaluate like what I wanted to do with my life. So back in high school, I was kind of like weary about where LZBMX would go as a brand. And I didn't really see it as anything sustainable. It was more of just a fun side project. And I never really thought it would be where it is today. But during my first year in college, like it really started taking off to the point where it was making a decent like livable income, which is awesome. And I started to realize that I was going to school to become an engineer, to make a lot of money and start a business and I already had a business that was becoming successful and making money. So after talking with a lot of mechanical engineers, talking with a lot of business students and everything, I decided to make the switch to a business management major with a focus in entrepreneurship. And literally the second I made that switch, school became so much more enjoyable because everything that I learn, I'm able to like practice, go home and do that same day. So it just makes it that much more interesting and it's helped me push my brand so much farther. So as a follow up question to that, that no one really asked, but I feel like you guys are thinking right now, is what do I want to do with LZBMX, with my life and everything after college? And the answer to that is, I don't really know. And I like that, I like not knowing where the future can take me because I truly do have ADD in that 
I cannot stay focused on one thing for a long period of time. And my interests change, what I like to do changes every single day. So as long as I can keep doing LZBMX and you guys keep supporting that, I wanna keep doing it. I have a ton of fun designing clothing products. I have a ton of fun working on the business and everything. But that's not to say I might not start another business in the future for another interest. I'm at the point where YouTube is pretty successful, my business is pretty successful, and it has provided a sense of cushion, if you will, to where I'm not really scared of my future, and I really have to tell you guys that it's an amazing feeling not worrying about where I'm gonna be. And I don't wanna sound cocky about this, but like knowing that I can kind of pivot and do things that I wanna do and find a way to make it successful is just like a super comforting feeling, and I truly do owe that to all of you, so that's my corny little moment of thankfulness. Terry Saunders wants to know my goals with BMX and drifting. Let me tell you something guys about this candle right here. This candle is not a candle, it does not smell good. This candle represents goals. G goals, goals. All right, goals, let's see, goals, 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 goals. What are my goals? Um, I wanna be able to do a double backflip by next year. I wanna become a pro Formula Drift driver and I want to beat everyone on the planet Earth, including everyone in Japan. And I just wanna be the best that I can be. Okay, all jokes aside, I really don't have many goals with either. It's kind of an interesting scenario, but I'll start with BMX first since I haven't really talked a lot about BMX in this. My main goal with BMX right now is to keep it fun. BMX for me has always kind of been an outlet, if you will, and that it's kind of like my escape from the real world and I can just go and have fun on my bike, whether it's going really high in a quarter or doing tricks down stair sets. Of course I set goals and I like to keep progressing and I like to keep learning stuff because that's what's fun for me but I've never really had many goals with BMX. Now goals are good because if you don't have goals, it'll make you lazy. But I'm kind of at the point with BMX where I have fun doing the tricks that I can do. Yes, I'd like to push myself a little harder, but I'm honestly a little burnt out on like the parks around me here and the people that I ride with. And I just honestly need to travel more to keep myself stoked on BMX. And it's kind of hard to do that in school. So I'm doing my best with it. But as you guys have probably noticed, my riding isn't progressing as fast as it used to. But once I'm out of school, I think I'm gonna be able to really push my riding how I'd like. While I'm talking about that, I do graduate this December. I'm gonna have to go to school this summer, which is gonna suck because I'm gonna be stuck in Florida and I'm not gonna be able to make a ton of awesome videos because it's gonna be miserable and hot. But that means that 2017, I will be doing nothing but YouTube videos and all this fun stuff full time. So I'm insanely stoked about that and I hope you guys are stoked about it as well and can make it to next year with me. Oh, given that I can try to keep uploading videos as best as I can. Now the next one's an interesting question. What my goals with drifting are. To some of you it might seem kind of random that I got into drifting, but to any of my friends or people that really know me, they probably saw it coming for a long time. Drifting's something that I've wanted to do. I've just always loved cars and I've always loved driving cars and I've always loved doing reckless things. So it just seemed like kind of a natural thing to do. I just never really had the connection or the resources or even the knowledge to make it happen. But I've been meeting a lot of people and working with brands like Njuku, BC Racing, and just making a lot of friends that have made it possible, which I can't be more thankful for. But ultimately, my goals with drifting are again, just like BMX, to have fun. With BMX right now, I have a hard time getting that adrenaline rush that I used to. You guys might know what I'm talking about, like. When you start riding and you land a trick that you've been working on forever or you do something really crazy, you get this crazy adrenaline rush and it's awesome, but BMX is like a drug and that to keep that adrenaline rush going, you have to keep on going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Otherwise it just wears off. For me to be going any bigger right now and get that adrenaline rush from BMX, I'm gonna be having to do like tricks down El Toro and stuff, which is awesome, but it's not for me because I don't wanna get broke off and then not be able to ride at all because like I said, riding for me is fun. I'm not trying to push myself and be the best BMX rider in the world. I'm just trying to have fun, hang out with my friends and make cool videos. I don't really plan on doing drifting competitively. I just love it right now as like pure fun. It's just awesome because when I'm out there, I'm drifting and I'm having fun for me. I'm doing what I wanna do. And it's just awesome making friends and just experience a whole new community with so much to learn. Because my favorite thing about BMX was being a beginner. Embrace the fact if you're a beginner with BMX right now and enjoy that phase of your BMX career, if you will, because it's the best time that you're gonna have. Being able to learn tricks super easily, being able to make tons of friends, go new places, and just be stoked on everything. That was my favorite part of BMX, and I'm kind of reliving that through drifting, if that makes sense. I still love BMX just as much as I started, but you just can't get that feeling back of experiencing something new and learning from scratch. In summation, my goals with drifting are to just keep learning, keep having fun, making friends along the way. All right, this guy wants to know who my inspiration is for making YouTube videos. Yet again, I have ADD when it comes to watching anything or even just doing anything the same for a while. So there's no real like one YouTuber that I've watched a lot, 
But I'm going to kind of give you guys a quick list of all the people I've watched maybe over the past year and you're going to see a lot of similarities between my content now and lots of little things that they do because I truly like to watch videos of other YouTubers and pull stuff that I like and incorporate it into my videos. So the first person that led me onto the whole vlogging style was Roman Atwood. I just really like how he was able to incorporate so much personality into his videos and they could make a video just not even really doing much and I still found it entertaining. So that's cool. Following him, I caught wind of a guy named Casey Neistat who's also another vlogger except he has a completely different approach where he has a lot of cool film shots, a lot of cool music and just the way that the videos are put together just leads to making a really interesting vlog which is something that I wanted to learn how to do better myself. Now going more into my specific channels that I watch in regards to like what I like to do, um, that dude in blue was a huge inspiration for me in making car videos. I used to watch his reviews a lot and I just liked how he was able to talk and kind of have all these artsy shots and just merge it into content that was informative and enjoyable to watch. Now I'd say the next on my inspiration list is a guy named Andy Schrock. I caught wind of him after I started watching Roman Atwood's videos and it was so cool because Andy is literally like Roman Atwood in the vlogging style except he's also like us in the webisode style but with skateboarding. And the really cool thing is that Andy has a kid and he's super cute and he has his own warehouse with a skate park and he has two brands himself. So for me that's a huge inspiration not just with the YouTube thing but in terms of life goals. Andy's doing it right and he went from being one of my favorite YouTubers to one of my super favorite YouTubers when he sent me this sweet shirt from his brand Revive and included headphones because I was freaking out because I was having a bad day and I really needed headphones before I went to the skate park and he included a set of his Revive headphones so big thank you to you Andy. Me and Andy have been talking about doing some collab videos in the future it's just it's really tough for me to travel with school and everything right now. So I can't tell you when that's going to happen, but it's going to happen and it's going to be awesome. Now I'd say the last and most recent YouTuber that I started watching is a guy that I really don't know that much about, so forgive me if I say something wrong, but the channel name is Nori Yaru and it's a guy that speaks English but he lives in Japan and he basically goes around and documents like the Japanese drift scene and he's a crazy good driver himself, he has an awesome personality. And his videos are just really well put together, so I've been enjoying that a lot. It just takes me and makes me feel like I'm in Japan, which is somewhere where I would love to go and try to experience that myself and make videos, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But it will happen. All these YouTubers together kind of gave me inspiration in different aspects of my own videos, so I would definitely appreciate it and I'm sure they would if you went and checked out their channels. I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description so you can go and check out every single one of them and maybe you'll find a new channel that becomes your favorite. Just don't forget about me. Rimsey asked when my signature frame will be out and how much money it will be. Great question, dog! <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, I have a signature frame coming out with Stranger and I'm insanely stoked on it. It will be out in June and right now we are aiming to have the price point somewhere around $300. I really don't know what it will be exactly, but I do know that it was going to be super expensive with the hydroform tubing and a bit heavier than I wanted. So I decided to turn it into more of just a basic gusseted frame to help keep the price point low so a lot of you guys could afford it and to keep the weight a little bit down because I didn't want straight gauge tubing the whole way. I'm super stoked on that and it should be available pretty soon. Dog? Jason asked if I think it's a good idea for him to go into business and then try to freelance work by doing graphic design, photography, cars on YouTube. I'm not going to answer your question exactly but I do want to make a point. I don't think anyone should ever want to start a YouTube channel or to try to get involved in a community for the sole purpose of having a business or trying to make money. I've seen so many brands and so many people try to start up and just gain foothold in like the BMX world or the car world that have no connection with it and it just doesn't really work. It always shines through that you're not passionate about what you're doing. So my best recommendation to any of you guys that want to start a business or to the, any of you guys that want to get more involved, do YouTube videos or something, don't do it for the money. It sounds really cliche to say but if you do something and it shows that you're passionate about it you're going to be way more successful than if people can see right through you and know that you're just becoming a part of something to make money. My advice is to just follow what you want to do don't follow the dollar signs. If I follow the dollar signs I would have been a mechanical engineer and I would have been miserable working for someone having a 9 to 5 and not getting to do what I wanted to do. Alyssa Milano wants to know if I plan on staying in Florida after college or moving somewhere else. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably know that I'm not too fond of Florida. However, I will most likely end up staying here, and here's why. First, as you guys know, I'm marrying Nicole. We're getting married July 6th, and we're going to get a house together. Now, I'll still have one semester left in school, so that's one reason for me to stay in Florida. Reason two is that Nicole's family lives here, and family is really important to her, so she wants to be close to her family. 
Reason three that I'm gonna stay in Florida is because there's no state income tax. That in combination with how cheap it is to live down here, there's no emissions on cars, and it's just very easy for drifting, very easy in terms of the car world. There's a lot of connections down here. There's a pretty big car community. So I think it's good to have as a home base because you guys have to remember that once I'm out of school, I plan on traveling at least more than 50% of the time. So it doesn't matter if I'm not insanely stoked on where I live because in my head, it's just gonna be like a home base. Florida's sick, but if you're stuck here, it can get very boring and it can definitely run you down. One of the things I've noticed down here, which is kind of interesting, is that you think it would be great being able to ride year round, but I actually think it's worse than when I lived up north because that winter where like you couldn't really ride was almost like a break to refresh yourself and recoup and heal up and get stoked for the next season, where here it's just ride, 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 get bored of every single park, sweat a lot, be humid, be miserable. I complain a lot, I'm sorry. I know there's gonna be some people that are saying, oh, you're so ungrateful, I live in Canada and it's like two degrees. I'm sorry, I'm sure that must suck, but. I would almost rather ride Joyride a lot in the cold and drive really far than sweat to death in Florida. I think we all hate where we live. Just everyone always wants to be somewhere where they're not, so. Charlie Stunson wants to know if there are any more upcoming trips this year. The answer is yes. Now, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but I have to take summer school in order to graduate this winter. So my summer's not gonna be as open as it normally will, especially with the fact that I'm getting married to Nicole and we're gonna be going on a honeymoon. I don't know where we're going. We're probably gonna go on a cruise or something. We've just always wanted to go on a cruise. So in terms of trips where I'll be able to meet you guys and see you guys, there's not gonna be a ton this year, but the stuff that I know is gonna happen is going to be Woodward West. I don't know what week that will be there, but it's gonna be later in the summer, probably late July, early August. We'll also be at Interbike again this year, so we'll be roaming around Vegas for about a week. And I want to go to SEMA, so I'll be up in Vegas again. I'm sure I'll wind up in California again this year. And I'll have like a week in between my spring semester and summer semester where I'll probably go somewhere. Maybe Connecticut, I don't know, but the cool thing is the way I was able to set up my summer schedule, I have long weekends every weekend, so if I can try to bounce around the US to some close places and just spend a few days there, I want to do that because I hate making videos in the same place over and over again. I love traveling. I want to do stuff like the Barcelona series way more. It's just going to be tough until 2017 for me to really do lots of stuff like that with school and everything. Your name wants to know if as a young business owner, if I find that other big companies don't take me seriously because I'm a young business owner and if so, how do you get by that? I don't think it has anything to do with age to be honest. I think the biggest struggle that I've had in the past was overcoming the notion that being a YouTuber is kind of a new thing and not a lot of companies understand that, especially in the BMX world. The car world's definitely more onto the idea of becoming a YouTuber and how much value it can bring, but the BMX industry is way behind on that and they just have never really understood and Rich as Stranger was the first person to really understand what was going on and that's why I chose to work with him because it's very important to me that people understand the value you can bring to a company being a YouTuber. And it is a somewhat new thing, so I understand that a lot of companies don't understand, but a lot of the companies that I've talked to don't even really try to understand. I'm finding that being a YouTuber is becoming a more common thing and more people are starting to understand and it's cool being able to go and talk to someone and instead of just saying, oh yeah, I make videos on YouTube and you're like, oh, like, you make a living off that? Being able to say you're a YouTuber and that they just understand what that means because it's cool how mainstream it's become. So that, I feel like didn't really answer your question totally because you want to know how to make them take you seriously. So I guess the best way to do that would be to just give them numbers. People love numbers. If you tell them that your videos get a lot of views and you show them facts and you show them followers, that shows a lot more than just saying like, hi, I have a big following on social media. Can you send me some shirts and stickers? Like no, like pitch yourself. Tell them why you will bring value to their company. Put yourself in their shoes. Like, why would they want to work with you? Why would they want to do anything for you? And if you can portray it to where you add value to them, it should be no problem getting to work with them. It's just trying to find the right person to talk to and waiting for that response because sometimes working with big companies, it can take a while to get in touch with someone. All right, so the last question I'm gonna answer from B. Randon is how it was meeting a big YouTuber like David, TJ, and Evan. As you guys have seen, I've been doing quite a few more collaboration videos and collaboration series and working with other YouTubers lately. And I have to say, it's one of my favorite things. Being a YouTuber and making these videos is a very unique thing that 
even though I said more people understand, not everyone understands. So when you get together with other YouTubers, it's like you instantly bond because you can instantly relate to all this nerdy YouTube stuff and all this followers and just, there's just so much to relate to. So whenever I do a collaboration video or hang out with a YouTuber, it's really cool because there's just so much that we relate on. And it's tough when not a lot of your friends do similar stuff to this because you can't really talk about it with anyone because they don't understand and it might even come off as bragging. So. I almost never talk about what I do with people that I meet or really anyone other than like Nicole or like my close friends. So it's definitely awesome doing stuff like that. I love meeting other YouTubers. And of course, if you guys know any other YouTuber that you want me to collaborate with, maybe reach out to them, reach out to me and let me know and try to get us in touch because it can be hard to reach out to them. And especially if I don't know who I'm supposed to be reaching. I, I don't even know where I'm going with this. But anyway, um, if you did end up watching this whole video, which I'm sure came out to be pretty long because it took me like an hour to answer each question, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Like, please hit the like button, as cliche as it sounds, because it really makes a big impact on the success of the video. And I just spit on the camera lens. Sorry, guys. Hope that didn't get on your face. Um, but yeah. Drop a comment if you have a question that I didn't answer, if you want me to go into more detail about something. Because I literally check all the comments, I read all the comments, I just don't always respond to every single one because, well, that would be a full-time job. So, again, in addition to commenting, it's always awesome when you guys answer each other's questions because that saves a ton of work for me and it lets me do things like fix the Miata, which is still sitting in the garage, having issues starting, which is what I'm going to go do now. Just gotta go buy some electrical connectors, but... That'll be in a future video. Got some stuff to do that. Got some stuff to do for you. Got some stuff to do to the 335. We always got stuff to do to the cars. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. So last night, the Miata just got dropped off. Summer Sporta license plate from a Miata.